Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to be performing an antibody screen. Alrighty, let's get started. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform an antibody screen. Um, so this is a uh, procedure that we do in blood bank all the time. It is part of the type and the screen. Um, so a type would be doing the patient's ABO blood type. And then the screen as what we're doing today uh, in this video um, is showing whether or not uh, the patient has any allo antibodies. So these are antibodies that are present in the patient's plasma from either um, an exposure through pregnancy or also from a blood donation. So that's how you would get one of these antibodies more than likely. Um, so this is detecting whether or not the patient has any um, allo antibodies in their uh, plasma or serum. So uh, what we do here is um, first I have the patient's uh, correctly identified patient sample. So it's labeled lab rat already. Um, this is actually a phlebotomy student's um, sample uh, that I'm using for this, but it has to be an EDTA tube. So it can either be a lavender or a pink top tube and it has to be spun down. So you can see the patient's plasma and then also the patient's red blood cell. So this is centrifuge. So we have that properly labeled. We need some disposable pipettes blood bank saline. So again, uh, we use saline uh, for a lot of things on blood bank. It has to be saline. It cannot be water um, because water will lyse the red blood cells. We have blood bank saline. And then um, the first part of this, you need to have your screening cell. So this is screening cell number one, and this is screening cell number two and screening cell number three. So these are red blood cells that have known red blood cell antigens on them. So actually, let me get out the little paper that has it on it. So each lot um, of these screening cells comes with a panel that shows you. So screening cell one is positive or negative for all of these antigens on this first line here. Screening cell two is positive or negative for all of these antigens on this line here. And then screening cell three is positive or negative for all of these antigens here. And there's enough in this particular, these three cell panels that if somebody has a clinically significant antibody, it's gonna show up on this, right? So one important thing to note is the lot number. So each lot number is different, has different antigens present um, on it. So you wanna make sure that you compare this lot number with the lot number on the screening cells. So that's just an important note. So this is the screening cells. Now, another thing that you'll need for this is some sort of potentiator. So I'm actually gonna use low ion or list. So this is going to um, encourage any antibodies of present to react in tube. So we have low ion, so that we use later. And then we also need um, an AHG. So I'm using a monospecific anti-IgG for this particular test. And then also we need check cells for the end of it. So these are the reagents that we need. And I'll talk about each one of these. Um, so in addition, uh, I have two, three tubes that are labeled with the patient's identification. So lab rat is my patient's first and last name. And then I've labeled them SC1, SC2, and SC3. So screening cell one, two, and three. All right. So first step of this is I'm going to take one disposable pipette take the cap off of my sample and I'm going to put two drops of patient plasma in each of those tubes and put the plasma back and then off to my left I have a biohazard container that I'm going to use for these this needs to be discarded and biohazard and then I'm going to put the, the cap back on I never want to leave it over or open all right, now what I'm going to do is put one drop of each of these corresponding screening cells in. So I'm going to mix it gently, make sure all those red blood cells are off the bottom of this particular vial. So screening cell one is going to go in screening cell one. All right, screening cell two goes in the screening cell two vial. That's just one drop. 
screening cell three is going into the tube label screening cell three. All right, so I have these. I'm gonna gently mix them a little bit. So the first step is detecting any antibodies that react in immediate spin. So this means room temperature. So I'm gonna centrifuge these for 15 seconds and then check them uh, after that a point of time. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. So I have just completed the immediate spin uh, centrifuging step and I'm going to go ahead and grade the reactions. So I have Again, patient identifier. And you can see here on this sheet, I have labeled the patient's name lab rat, and then the date. And then I have screening cell one, screening cell two, screening cell three. And then I have immediate spin, 37 degrees Celsius, the AHG phase, check cells, and then the result. So the screening cell one here. So we're gonna check it. It's kind of hard to show on video, I apologize. You can see that button there. Um, it's gonna fall off though. Just gently rotate it, gently shake it. All right. This is a negative result. No agglutination there. All right. So I'm going to immediately write that on my on my um, result sheet. So immediate spin zero for screening cell one. Now let's take a look at screening cell two. Oh. It's hard to do this in front of a camera. The Actually, the camera is my cell phone and I'm filming it like right in front of my face. So I'm actually looking at this through my cell phone and not, not directly. <laughs> All right. So you can see there's a little bit of button down there, but it's definitely falling off. Now you don't want to like shake these super hard like this. That would be incorrect. You want to just keep a little bit of shaking. There's no agglutination there. So screening cell two is negative and immediate spin. So I'm going to do a zero there. All right, let's see this next one, screening cell three. So you can see that button, and a lot of students get this confused uh, with agglutination. So it's not, that button is actually just like stuck to the bottom of the glass. It's not an actual agglutination, and you just kind of have to shake it off a little bit. But it definitely is, this is definitely a negative result. All right, negative for screening cell three, immediate spin. Okay, so that's my first step. So then the next step is 37 degrees Celsius. But we, what we want to do is, if you recall, I talked about low iron or LIS. Um, so we are going to use this to try to encourage the antibodies at present to react into these particular uh, reagents. So with these reagents. So I'm gonna take two drops of the low ion and put two drops in each of these tubes. All right. Gonna give it just a slight mix. Okay, so that's gonna lower, potentially lower the zeta potential, which um, encourages any antibodies at present to work. So then off to my left here is a incubator. And I'm going to incubate both of these, or I'm sorry, all three of these, it's more than both in this incubator. The incubator is set to 37 degrees Celsius, which is body temperature, and they are going to sit in this incubator for uh, 15 minutes. Um, and after that, I will uh, return. Okay, so my three screening cell tubes have incubated at 37 degrees Celsius um, and for 15 minutes. And the next step here is actually, I'm going to centrifuge them again and record my results in the 37 uh, degrees Celsius uh, result window. So I will be right back. Okay, so my samples have incubated uh, with the low ion in them for 15 minutes at 37 degrees Celsius, and I have just centrifuged them. So to get the results for the 37 degrees Celsius um, resulting, I need to look at them under the light again. All right, so this is screening cell number one, and it has that button there at the bottom, but it's definitely coming off. So again, that centrifuging causes those red cells to kind of stick to the bottom of the glass, and this makes it look to an untrained eye like it's positive, like, oh, there's a big gluten. It's not. It's definitely coming off. All right. 
right, that's a beautiful negative result. So before going to my next tube, I'm going to put screening cell one, zero under 37 degrees. Let's look at screening cell two. And there's a big button there. Do not get that confused with agglutination. If it's agglutination, it's not gonna stick to the bottom there. It's gonna just be like a big particle like that, just free in uh, the plasma. And it's, it's definitely negative. But we wanna make sure to shake it all the way off. We want all that red cell to come off and be free in that plasma. All right. Perfect, screen cell two is negative. So I'm gonna put a zero for that 37 degrees under screen cell two. All right, last tube, screen cell three. It's the same thing, this is definitely gonna be a beautiful negative, but we're not gonna call it negative until that entire button comes off. All right, beautiful negative so screening cell three is negative so i'm going to write that for this particular patient in screening cell three all right now the next stage is ahg so we will go ahead and do that phase so ahg uses this reagent it's a monospecific um uh, ahg here it is right here it's usually green um before using ahg you actually have to wash these cells um, so a lot of blood banks have a, a commercial um, automated cell washer. Um, you can use that um, or you can do it manually. So um, to uh, manually do it, um, I would recommend watching my other video. Um, I can link it down uh, below this. It will show you actually how to do a uh, manual washing procedure. But for these, uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the automated cell washer. But before you put an AHG, you always gotta wash them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then uh, once I'm done with that, I will come back and we'll go ahead and add the AHG. Okay, so I have gone ahead and washed each of these tubes three times, and my next step is going to be putting two drops of this AHG or anti-IgG reagent into each of these tubes. One, two, one, two, one, two. All right, we're almost done. Okay, so I'm gonna gently shake these up to mix them, and then I'm gonna put each of these three tubes into the centrifuge for 15 seconds and then I will be back. Okay, I have put the AHG in each of these tubes and then centrifuge them and the next step is just looking at them under the light. Oh yeah, that's definitely negative. Shake those off. Beautiful, it's a beautiful negative. So screening cell one is negative in AHG. Let's check out screening cell two. So what kind of mistakes can you make here? Uh, reading it wrong, obviously. Um, another mistake would be taking both of these or three of them and shaking them at the same time. You never wanna do this ever, one at a time. Also, another thing, um, shaking these too hard, like this, this would be inappropriate. You wanna just continually do this and a little bit of shaking is fine. Um, I know that this patient is negative, so it's fine, um, but you wouldn't know that in, a, in an actual clinical setting. So you just wanna easy shake it. So this one is negative. So screening cell two is negative in AHG. And then screening cell three. This one's gonna be negative as well. Get that button off of there. So these are negative. So what does that mean? Am I done? The answer is no, we are not done. What needs to happen? So screening cell three is also negative. So what we need to do is QC our HG reagent by putting in check cells. So check cells are um, IgG uh, coated red blood cells. Here they are, check cells. And this is going to bind with the HG and cause agglutination if the HG is uh, working properly or has been put in. So for every negative result uh, with HG, you need to QC it. So one, two, three. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and centrifuge these for 15 seconds. And after that, we will come back and read them and that'll be the end of the antibody screen procedure. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So I have put these check cells in my negative tubes and I've centrifuged them for 15 seconds. And now we're going to take a look at them. All right, so we should be getting a positive reaction with these. Yep. It's gonna be really, really hard to tell with this video, but I am getting some agglutination in there. Okay. All right, it's very, very weak. Two plus, screening cell two. Same with this one. Unfortunately, it's really hard to tell through the um, video recording, but there are some little agglutinates in there. Goodness, I can't get that cell button off. Holy moly. Yeah. It's definitely a positive reaction. Two plus. Yeah, looking at it in person, you can see the the uh, agglutinates. Uh, I, looking it through the camera, it doesn't look like it, but I promise you they're there. Tiny little agglutinates there. This one's also a two plus. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna put two plus here. Okay, so for this particular patient, it was negative and immediate spin, negative and 37 degrees Celsius, negative AHG phase, and all of our check cells worked, which means that these, uh, this AHG phase worked because the check cells worked. So the result here is negative. And so this patient has a negative antibody screen. So what would happen if any of these were positive, right? So not the check cells, but if it was positive here. So that means that it indicates that the patient has an antibody. So the next step for that would be, you would have to do an antibody panel um, to determine uh, the identification of that specific antibody. And I will make a video for that as well. All right, so that includes the procedure for the antibody screen. Hopefully this helped you. If it did, go ahead and give this video a like. Um, and also please remember to subscribe to my channel uh, for more educational laboratory content. Alrighty, until next time.